Hello everyone, I'm here to talk to you about the Scully AR-1 and my personal experience with pre-ordering the helmet. Uh, I first heard about the helmet in March 2015. I went to the website. This helmet was to feature a e-tent visor, which means that if you go into a tunnel, it would get lighter. And as you come out of the tunnel, it would automatically get darker. It was all supposed to have Bluetooth connectivity so that you can get your incoming calls, GPS, listen to music and etc. It also had a rear facing 180 degree wide angle lens that was supposed to virtually eliminate blind spots and to increase safety. But the number one thing that caught my eye was that it featured a heads up display. Now for most people, when you hear a heads up display, you think of fighter pilots and what they see when they're in the air trying to locate targets or whatnot. Or you think of Iron Man in the movies as he's flying around and he's trying to save the planet, but he gets all this information displayed on his face shield that helps him to do that. So you think, how cool is that? That I could have a motorcycle helmet riding around and I get all this information on my screen. So then in May of 2015, I finally got around to pre-ordering the helmet. And then in November, about six months later, they told me the helmets were gonna start coming out and that at the latest, it would be here in March. December of 2015, I got another email stating that the helmets were now pushed back to May of 2016. February of this year, 2016, I got an email that said they want me to confirm the size of the helmet and to confirm the shipping address because they were ready to send them out. So they also said in the email that the helmet is very similar in fitment to the Shoei RF-1200 helmet. So I went to a store where I frequent quite often when I'm gonna make purchases for my motorcycle or whatnot or look at jet skis and things of that nature. And uh, of course, some of the salespersons knew me right off the bat and they said, hey, you know, is there anything we can help you with? I'm like, yeah, you know what? I hear about this helmet, it's the Scully AR-1. I wanna check out the RF-1200s because they say the size is almost the same. I wanna try on a few RF-1200s so I know which size to ask for my Scully or to order for my Scully. And the salesperson had a funny look on his face and I go, hey, I caught that look. What's that all about? He said, well, we had the Scully R1 here in the store and a lot of our representatives were able to try it on and so on, and um, they weren't impressed by it. They said that it felt like a $200 helmet with a lot of electronics in it. And so I was a little skeptical about one person's opinion, because we all have our own opinions, right? Well, another associate, another associate, another person that worked there, all in different departments, I guess, came in to take a look at this helmet, and they all had the same pretty bad perception of how this helmet is to function. First of all, this here is an RF 1100. The 1200 is a more advanced, nicer helmet, obviously. But for this video, this will serve its purpose. Now, what they did with the Scully Air One is they installed a small prism that sits right about here. And you look through that prism to see the information that you're trying to see. So as your speed or your elevation or that incoming phone call from mom or whoever it is that's giving you a call, that kind of thing. All that information is displayed on there, but I was told it's a little bit bigger than your thumbnail. So I decided to look up, well, what qualifies as a HUD, a heads up display? Well, heads up display just means that the information is uh, displayed on a transparent piece of glass or plastic and that you're able to see through it onto the road and continue driving in a safe manner without having to turn your head or shift your neck in any kind of way. So therefore, if you're looking straight ahead and you have to you know, dart your eyes left or right, you haven't shifted your head. So therefore, technically, it's a heads up display. But in, in my thoughts, that's not what I thought I was getting. That's not what I thought the video depicted. And the reason I say that is because if you look at the BMWs, the Camaros, the Corvettes, they all have heads up displays and it's a small projector that shoots the image onto the windshield of your car so you can see through that data 60 miles an hour, but you can see through it as you continue to drive. You don't have to look down to the right or down to the left. You don't have to do any of that. So 
I went back to asking guys, well, what, do you, what, what did you guys really dislike about the helmet? They said, if, like I said before, it feels like a $200 helmet with electronics. So all the electronics of the Scully AR-1 is in the wing. And they say, this isn't confirmed, because again, I can't get any information from Scully, um, but they say that it weighs about three pounds. The human head on average is about 10 pounds. So if you've got a 10 pound head in this helmet and three pounds extra on the back, it just seems like it may not be quite the comfortable fit that you're looking for. I don't know if that affects wind resistance or anything like that, drag maybe, I don't know. What I do know is that I paid for this helmet almost a year ago, and I don't know any other thing on the planet that you can purchase unless it's a $250 million car or something like that, like a Bugatti or some handmade car that you pay up front, and then you get the car after it's built a year later. But this is a motorcycle helmet. You can walk into any store and get an Araya, a Shoya, HGV, a, I mean, HJC, an AGV, an Icon, anything like that, and you pay, and they have helmets that cost $1,000 and up. And you can go in there and buy the helmet, you pay for it, you take it home, you're good to go. So to me, Scully has $1,500 from multiple people. They haven't delivered their product, which in turn means that that's a 0% interest loan because they've got the money and I'm sure it's in an account somewhere and it's probably accruing interest, but we don't see it. All we do is wait and continue to get emails about this product, this helmet that's supposed to come out. So on top of that, when you go to the website, and I try and log into my own account to change the size, to cancel the order. Whatever I want to do, you can't do it. It won't let you. It says call or email customer support. When you go to the forums to try and find out what are other people who have pre-ordered it saying? What are some of the beta testers saying? What is anyone saying about this helmet that actually got their hands on it? And the forums are down. Supposedly, they're down for owners only to make it an owner's only portal or something like that. And I know before on the forums, they were up at one time and guys were asking, is it Snell approved? Is it DOT approved? Is it, you know, did it pass this certification, that certification? I'm a computer technician who rides a motorcycle. So that's where I come into this. I'm in the technology I ride. So a helmet that has all this technology was right up my alley. But in those forums, the guys were asking, is it Snell approved? And I remember them saying, Scully saying, no, it's not. And uh, it is DOT approved and it's got some other certifications, but it's not the same thing. As a matter of fact, when I talked to the guys inside the store, they said if you take the helmet upside down and you were to, to you know, kind of fold it in, it flexes really badly. This is the RF 1100 Showy. I'm six feet, 200 plus, And I mean, I could probably if I really wanted to, but it doesn't flex so easily. So then I was thinking, well, what if I cancel the order? Is there anything that's comparable to that kind of helmet, comparable to the AR-1? And if you're looking for a solution that has all the electronics embedded into the helmet where you won't see anything protruding, it's not a modular helmet, it's just a solid helmet, then that's what you're going to wait for. If you don't mind having that little um, monitor or prism inside your helmet, you know, about here, then you're fine with it. The people at the store were concerned because they said, what if you got into a really bad accident? Is that going to snap off so that it doesn't protrude into your eye and, you know, gouge your eye out or whatnot? They weren't too impressed with the way this thing was built or how much safety was put into it. So like I said, I decided to see what else, what other alternatives there are to that helmet. You can get the RF-1200, which is probably what I'm going to do. Not sure yet. I'm going to talk with Scully. I'm going to get a hold of them. I will leave updates on this channel uh, of what they say, any emails or any information I get, I'll pass it along to you guys. But aside from that, if you go out and get an RF 1200 helmet and you put your own camera on here, this is a contour, but you can get a Garmin, a Sony, a GoPro and pop that on here. If you wanted to get the features of the Bluetooth, the GPS navigation and things like that, streaming music, R, uh, FM, AM radio, something like that, you can get the um, pack talk chatterbox something like that can go on here um, showy actually makes a face shield called the cwr1 and what that does is it has the same feature as the e-tent in the era one meaning if you were to take the shield off and put that one on this helmet if you go into a tunnel 
it will get lighter and turn clear so that you can see safely through the tunnel. And as soon as you come out of the tunnel, assuming that it's a bright sunny day, it will darken up. It darkens up pretty well. I've seen it. I'm probably going to get it and do a review on that here. But for now, I'm letting you know that if you pop that shield onto a new helmet, get your camera, get your Bluetooth. It's modular, means you had to put it together with components, but it basically does the same thing as the AR-1. The only thing that it doesn't do or wouldn't do if you try to piece it together is you wouldn't have the rear facing camera, which Scully puts about right here. And it has a 180 degree wide angle lens, which they say will virtually eliminate uh, blind spots for riders, which you know is important. My issue with the Scully design is that if you have to even dart your eye through this prism, if I have to dart my eye at that, and I had to look at it every now and then, every time you dart down at this prism to get that information, you are putting yourself at risk. And if you have a rider, you're putting your rider's life at risk because all it takes is that much time for a car to jump in front of you and you lose the reaction time you need because you're looking through this prism and now you guys are on the ground, hopefully, you know, you'll be okay. But who wants to take that chance? I just don't like the idea that they're technically calling it an HUD, heads up, heads up display, because you don't turn your head. But if you have to take your eyes off the road for any reason, any reason at all, you're putting yourself in danger. And if you have your, you know, a friend, a loved one behind you, you're putting their lives in danger. So I haven't canceled my order yet. I'm gonna contact Scully tomorrow or attempt to contact them and see what they have to say. But I'm really today leaning towards getting the RF-1200 showy helmet, getting the CWR-1 uh, photochromatic face shield. Um, I like the new Garmin more than I like GoPros or Contours. Uh, so I'll probably get that as a camera. And I've already purchased uh, the Pack Talk, the new Pack Talk. And that's another thing with the Scully Air One helmet. If you have that helmet and you want to communicate with other riders, they must also have a Scully AR-1 helmet, according to Scully. But the Pack Talk, from what I understand, and I'll do a review on it, it allows you to talk to almost any device that's out there. Matter of fact, it even recognizes other bikes and keeps their information, well, not the bike, but the helmet. And say you guys are crossing paths. If it picks up that that bike was ever paired to this helmet, it'll reconnect to it. So you could be like, hey bro, where you headed? I'm headed to the store. All right, I'll catch you later. I mean, that's kind of neat. That's kind of nice that you can do that. And you can't do that with Scully. You know, there's a lot of things that um, they're supposed to be technologically advanced. And I understand where they're going with it. I don't think they're quite there yet. And um, for someone who shelled out 1500 plus dollars almost a year ago and still haven't got the helmet, you know, it's a little upsetting. So I will keep you posted. I'll keep you updated. I'll let you know what happens with that helmet. You guys be safe. Keep two wheels on the ground. I'll talk to you later.